What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are all having a fantastic day. Today we are heading out to one of my favorite places to film to talk about the GT500. And of course we're low on gas again. So let me know if this is a good idea. I pretty much wait until I'm at about a quarter and then go fill the whole thing up. I don't really feel the need to constantly fill it up unless it gets to like a quarter. But I also heard it's bad if you get it too low. I guess it'll ruin your fuel injectors or something like that. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below if there's there's something wrong with what I'm doing, which is wait until it gets to like a quarter and then fill the whole car up at once. Ooh, premium is only zero dollars. If y'all are wondering, I get my gas from Sam's Club, but only for the GT500 because they don't have E85 and my TRX is on E85. So unfortunately, I can only fill up the GT500 here, not the TRX, and it's like a dollar cheaper here than anywhere else. 93 is actually three dollars and thirty cents. Not bad. It is super cold out here. It's literally like 25 degrees. And I hope you guys have been enjoying the latest racing videos. I think I have like three or four racing videos that I've posted lately. There definitely will be a lot more as soon as the weather gets better. I pretty much raced everybody that's willing to race in this weather because a lot of people don't really want to race in 25 degree weather because of traction and some of them store their cars for the winter. So I will try my best to give you guys as many racing videos as I can. Obviously, once we approach springtime and summertime, the racing videos will just be like a regular type of thing where I'll post like a few a week. Alrighty, we're done. And we just filled it up for $31. Alrighty, let's bounce. Whew, $31. I know it wasn't empty, but that's great. You know, I filled the TRX up for 105 So driving this thing saves me a lot more money than the TRX. And a full tank was able to give me 149 miles. Well, that's great. Now I can go down the block and back. Next up, car wash. And yes, it is a touchless car wash. See, it does not touch the car whatsoever. Look at that. No brushes, nothing. And it makes the inside of your car smell really good. So we just got out of the car wash and it does not look that bad. I mean, it's not the best job, but it's a lot cleaner than what it used to look like. So now let's get the heck out of here and continue with this video. How about a quick pull? That was all spinning right there. Literally did a rolling burnout. Look at that. Wow, that looks like a bad motorcycle crash right there. Okay, one more. <laughs> so we're here at one of my favorite filming places to talk about the GT500. So as awesome as this car is, I was able to put together five things I hate about this car and it was not very easy to do. I love this car, but I had to get petty and well, every car has its flaws and I was able to find five flaws in my GT500. So coming in at first is the weight. This thing weighs 4,100 pounds and that is pretty heavy considering the Mustang GTs weigh about 3,700 pounds. So we're talking about 400 more pounds added to the GT500. I understand it has a supercharger and it's gonna weigh a lot more, but I'm sure they could have figured it out and tried to shave some weight off this thing. 4,100 pounds is too close to a Hellcat weight. We're talking about 4,400 pounds on the Challenger and 4,600 pounds on the Charger. And that's just too close. You're too close. 4,100 pounds, in my opinion, is way too heavy. I feel like the appropriate weight for this thing would have been about 3,900 pounds. I think that is still on the heavier side considering this is like the supercar of muscle cars so it should have been way less than 4100 pounds but unfortunately it isn't so coming in at second is the interior and boy does this interior need some work so as soon as you open it you got this it's like foam and plastic garbage right here this leather doesn't look that premium you got some more plastic all this is garbage right here, more plastic garbage. Like, this is literally looks like a regular EcoBoost interior, right? Then you come over here, the seats are absolutely beautiful. Love the Recaro seats. I think they killed it with these seats. And then you step in here, and then you got more plastic. Like, what is this? This looks too similar to the EcoBoost. Like, this plastic looks so cheap. Like, there's plastic out there that could look like it's premium, and it's just plastic, but they went ahead and chose the cheapest plastic they could find this knob looks cheap everything looks cheap like this is a hundred thousand dollar car and they put the cheapest interior they could find i love the steering wheel i love the digital dash but this is not it like it's just too 
much plastic for my liking. And they also didn't put ambient lighting in here when the Mustang GT has it. It literally has it here under your feet. And well, Ford decided, hey, let's not put that in the GT500. Like, what was the thought process behind that? So coming in at number three, is that this GT500 was made in the older body Mustangs, the 2017, 16 year, where the 2018, 19, and 20, and forward Mustangs have a different body. It's not that much difference besides like the headlights. You guys probably cannot tell, but these headlights are not the new Mustang headlights. And then also, if you come back here, the tail lights are a little bit different. Like I said, if I didn't mention it, a lot of people would have not known that this isn't the newest Mustang body. Not like body, but like features, like headlights and taillights. It's still based on the older Mustang. And the main reason for that is because it just took too long and they were developing it when it was still in the older body. And by the time this came out, the newer body had come out and that's not what they were planning for. They were planning for this to come out with the older body or just after the older body, not after the new body. So the new body came out and then this came out in the older body. So coming in at four is, uh, let me just show you guys. So we're gonna turn it on. All right, we're gonna straighten out the steering wheel. And it's this, let's close this just so we could, uh, you know, hear. All right, let's clear these messages. So when you go here, you could customize a few things. Like if we put it into, let's say, track mode. All right, so when you put it in track mode, you can start messing around with this. Where is it? It's right here. So we could do the suspension and sport track. Okay, and then we could do the steering and sport and steering and comfort and normal. So there's three settings, right? And here's what I don't like. So right now in track mode, which is the fastest mode for this car right here, the traction is completely shut off. Everything, literally everything is off. And here's why I don't like that. So let's say you wanna race in your fastest mode, but you still wanna have traction on because it's too cold. Well, you can't do that. Can't customize that. Traction has to be completely off at all times. You cannot turn it on whatsoever. And I just don't like that it's not as customizable as a Hellcat, where a Hellcat, you could put your transmission in track, you could put your steering wheel in track, you could put your traction in sport or street or whatever. And then you could put your suspension in street or sport, where with this, you can't do that. You have to leave traction completely off when you're in track mode. And I just do not like that it's not as customizable as the Hellcat and that's, just annoying. So the fifth and final thing I hate about this car is it does not have a killer chiller. And what that means is that this car isn't able to cool itself down when the car is off, where in the Hellcats, it has a killer chiller where you just turn it on and it's able to cool the car down while the car is off or while the car is driving. Where with this, you kinda gotta just let the computer or the car cool itself down whenever it feels like it, where if you had a killer chiller, you could literally cool it down at all times but I'm not gonna lie, it does have some good cooling systems. I mean, look at this, it has like three condensers and they're literally all here. You can't see them, but there's like three of them. So it does a good job at cooling the car down, but I wish you were able to control that yourself. But overall, I love this car. Out of all the cars I've owned, this is literally my favorite. This car is as perfect as it can get, but like I said, every car has its flaws. And in this video, I wanted to mention a few flaws about this car, and it was very, very hard to come up with things I dislike about this car. All right, now let's enjoy it. We cannot get traction, but you gotta love these roads. Look at these roads, oh my God. Look how beautiful they are. And this car is literally made for these roads. Also, I need a huge favor from you guys. I need you guys to go follow me on Instagram at ToxicSRT. I'm almost at 40,000 followers. I need you guys to all go and get me there ASAP. And now we're making a quick stop at MC Whips and look what they got here. FA Green Trackhawk. You got the new Porsche Panamera. You got this wide body charger. You also have a brand new F250 right there. Let's get out and show you guys this truck. It's sick. Look at it. Wow. This thing is beautiful. Wow. And we got my boy Nick. What up, Ron? You look fresh today. You look good. You always look Different good. Different for the one time. So they got it in here, and I want to show you guys the interior of this thing. It's actually pretty sick. Look at this thing. Tan interior. 
You have the big screen right there. Look at that. This thing is a 6.7 liter. And it turned out to be one of my friend's trucks. I didn't know he comes here, but it's here. And uh, yeah, wow, it looks really good. And then this Range Rover is finishing up. It pretty much just has to get put together. This thing used to be white and now it's sand black. So this thing is actually a F350, not a 250. Whew. Look at this. Oh, they got another charger. Look at this, they got two of them. There's a red one over there and then this one. Looks good. I can't wait until my Hellcat shows up. It should literally be here in the next month and a half. I got a build date on it. It's supposed to get built February 8th and then it should take probably like a few weeks after that to show up, but we still got this. The build with this thing is gonna continue. In a couple days, we are doing a major interior modification, like major. I have never done this mod before. Always wanted to do it. It's gonna change the entire look of the interior. And no, it's not a carbon fiber steering wheel. Stay tuned for that. It should probably be maybe the next video or the video after that will be the modification video. But anyways, guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you are new to the channel or you just forgot to subscribe, make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you leave a like and make sure you turn your notification bell on. And I will see you guys on the next video. Peace.